are you really going to pour that whiskey in that glass? Why? Yeah, why? Everyone knows whiskey's supposed to be poured in a Glen Karen glass. But what if I don't know any better? Then you're not ready for this whiskey. You guys get tired of people telling you how you should drink your whiskey and what type of whiskey you should drink and in what. So today we're going to talk about what type of whiskey drinker you are. Right after this. Right after this. <laughs> My name's Jeff. Hey, and I am still Zane. And today, Whiskey Pop, hold my whiskey. Hold my whiskey. We're gonna talk about what type of whiskey drinker you may be, or at least help you identify the type of whiskey drinker you yes. may be coming in and contact with. I'm gonna tell you straight up, there is this, you matriculate through these. Hopefully you don't become one of them. So maybe we can kind of give you a nice warning not to become one of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But drinkers. some of the other ones is okay to kind of move around. Oh yeah, I think we're all at some point or another one of these whiskey drinkers. It's been too long though since I've had some whiskey. I don't have any in my glass. So okay, I, uh... I got the infinity bottle out. We've got some other whiskey or I can always pull something out of the cabinet because honestly, I'm not going to judge you on how you drink or what you drink or any of that today. All right. Well, okay. Uh, well, we do have the, the truffle shuffle. The truffle shuffle. I could do some truffle shuffle. Do the truffle okay. shuffle. There's also some Basil Hayden tin sitting over here. Oh, I've got some of that at home. <laughs> and, and your favorite moon, Melicorn. No, that's not Melicorn. <laughs> the only thing is I know that there's Melicorn in the truffle shuffle. <laughs> there is some Melicorn in the truffle shuffle. Uh, well, okay, so. You want me to pour you some truffle shuffle? Yeah, I'll take some truffle shuffle and I will have it in just a regular old plain whiskey glass. Yeah, now. I think we need to clarify from our little bit at the beginning. Okay, so clearly Zane is not a snob. He is a certain type, and I'm clearly not a snob, but I am a certain type. The, the key is when you start drinking whiskey, especially yeah. a whiskey noob coming into the scene, there's so much pressure on you to perform as a whiskey drinker, right? It, it's yeah. almost like you're in a club. Like, what's wrong with you for not tasting the hind ass of a <laughs> left-leaning goat on the hills of Manchuria? Like, how did you not pick that up in the glass like I did? <laughs> it's because it doesn't exist. Exactly right. You're, yeah. you're not going to smell the things that we're smelling. You're not going to taste nah. the things people are tasting. And you're definitely not going to pour your glass the way other people may pour it. So yeah. you may be the person who's putting a little bit of ice in your glass. You may be the person mixing it with a little Coke. I mean, yeah, whatever. it's okay. It. It's, it's however you like to drink it. But we thought we'd let you know what you might watch out for. Yeah. Because there is some stranger danger out there when it comes to whiskey drinkers. Yeah. Okay, so the first one we're gonna talk about is the snob. So obviously I I was opening up kind of being a snob. You were kind of a snob. The snob is that guy who's like judging you oh. from under their Glen Karen glass. Yeah, under right? their Glen Karen glass. Oh, oh <laughs> look at that guy. He's only <laughs> yes. Mm. We all run around and find snobs, and even some of our friends turn into snobs when they start drinking whiskey. Yeah, they're like, I don't buy $20 Jack Daniels. Oh, well, I mean. I mean, you're buying the, the good whiskey or nothing. Uh, well, and the thing is, is the snob is typically that guy it, it, that's like devalues other people's labor and hard work. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Oh, what? You can't afford to buy the... How, oh, look at you buying the cheap... And, and what about the people who make cheaper whiskey and put their heart into that product? It's like the snob suddenly knows better than you how you should drink your whiskey, yeah. what you should drink your whiskey out of, and the type of whiskey you should be drinking. They're probably telling you to hold your pinky up, too, whenever you're drinking it. Pinky! Pinky! Yeah. Pinky! Pinky! So the next one you got to watch out to become is the collector. <laughs> Now, David, listen, we don't hate you. <laughs> That's not right. That's not right. So, so who is the collector? That is a person who buys multiple bottles, mm. like they're going into the pandemic permanently. Yeah, it's the toilet paper buying of whiskey. They they have like four, five rows of like Buffalo Trace, Blanton. Yeah, but he's not that bad. So maybe On top of that, they also have like Henry McKenna. Okay, now he's that bad. <laughs> Elijah Craig. And they're like, dude. How is that whiskey? And here's what they usually tell you when you ask them how that whiskey was. 
Well, uh, I haven't had it yet. I haven't had it yet. Or I like how he pulls off. He goes, oh, it's been a while since it's I've had it. It's been that. a while, like six months. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great response. But again, it's it's that guy that's it's buying multiple bottles. Even if it's just like, oh, well, let me go ahead and grab another one while I'm here. They're like collecting Pokemon cards when it comes. Yeah, yeah. I got to get the whiskey that's in this entire product line. So they're the ones buying all of Buffalo Trace's new benchmarks. For sure. Why don't you get every one of those bottles? And then they don't open them. Yeah. I it's guess. like they got to stay, right. stay in mint condition, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My whiskey's in mint condition. It is stored in the perfect degree temperature in dark closets, never to be seen from man again. I mean, the collector's the guy you go over at their house and you realize how many barrel picks they have, yet you've never been to their house and drank one barrel pick ever. Well, I mean, mm, you know. A collector. You know why? Because they never opened them. They never opened them. Absolutely. A real collector, I mean, David definitely has got collector tendencies. Yeah, for Just sure. like we have certain tendencies too, but a real collector never drinks the whiskey they collect. Oh, yeah. It's like they literally are putting it up on a display like, you know, they, oh, look what I got. Yeah. Like, well, let's open that. Well, we can't open that. Yeah, I don't that, know when I'll be able to get another bottle. I mean, that bottle's not even made anymore. Yeah. I'm sure. like, dude, really? Whiskey is made to what? Who drink? That's right. And more importantly, with your friends. That's right too. I mean, don't collect whiskey. I mean, it's made to be drank. Yeah, I like that sad feeling I get when I finish a bottle off, and I'm like, will I be able to find this? It's not sad when it's over a great moment. Yeah, that is true. Boom. So now this one, it kind of seems like it's the collector, but there's a really dark part to this person. That's right, and we're talking about the hoarder. <laughs> The hoarder will go and buy every whiskey they can that's allocated at a liquor store. They're oh, there at right. like 10 in the morning. They're calling their buddies to show up and buy all the other bottles, right? Yeah, and then they're giving them the money to their buddies to give them the bottle that their buddies just bought. Yeah, because what are they going to do with it? They're just going to keep it. And then sell it. And more importantly, resell. At 400% its price. Yeah, it's this thing that is happening everywhere. Uh, it's gotten so bad that liquor stores have quit allocating their allocated whiskey. <laughs> right. <laughs> they're yeah. like, they've become collectors. It feels like I walk into a liquor store nowadays and they're like, oh no, we can't sell any of this. We collect it because people come in here and will hoard it. I'm yeah. like, well, isn't that the same thing? It's yeah. like, is, now you're a collector and a hoarder. <laughs> but now we're also seeing whiskey, whiskey uh, actual, I mean, the, the, you go into a liquor store and they are becoming their own order. They have. They're been. marking this crap up. Dude. Yeah, I mean, we've seen pictures lately of like Henry McKinnon today. I sent you a picture. It was like Henry McKinnon's a forty dollar whiskey, and they're selling it for a hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah. What was that? What was the nine? What was the thousand dollar bottle? What was that? You sent me the picture. Oh, that thousand dollar bottle of Blanton's. <laughs> oh well, it gold was, with buttons. It was gold. gold. It was it's a hundred twenty dollar bottle, but they're selling it for nine ninety nine. Right here, nine. locally. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. Let me, just, <laughs> like, let me just make it ring. Get that dot, that box. Okay, I'm a, my blood pressure went too high. Calm down, thing. calm down. You're getting too excited. You're getting too excited. Porters was... suck. So our next one yes. on our list of personality types of whiskey drink is the cheerleader. <laughs> uh, you mean like... You can only buy the best whiskeys, and those are only made by Buffalo Trace. Exactly. So now they're buying like all the Blantons, all the Buffalo Trace, all the Benchmarks, yeah. all the Zazerax, all, and that's what they're buying. Yeah. Or they, they get on the Jim Jim Beam yeah. train, right? Now they're yeah, just yeah, buying yeah. Jim Beams. I mean, kind of sounds like us though a little bit. Yeah, well, it's not, but it's not. But it's the not. cheerleader tends to not try other whiskeys as often. Yeah, they have right. that whiskey they really love, and that's the one they'll drink, and then they don't really sway from that. And every whiskey you introduce them to, it's just not as good as well the whiskey I, they're cheerleading. The thing is, we all have that tendency because you know I've got my new go-to. Yeah, no, and yeah, say that again. I've got my new go-to. New go-to. Cheerleaders don't add new go-tos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That is true. It's like, I've been drinking Jim Beam since I was 20 years old. I'm like, well, yeah, some really good whiskey out there that you're missing out on. So, yeah. so the cheerleader can be kind of annoying, and they could lead you astray if you're somebody who's new to whiskey. Yeah. Our next person would be the poser. <laughs> Thank you.
You uh, know the poser. Everybody knows a poser. This is the person who can talk the talk and walk the walk, but then you go to their house and they don't either A, have whiskey. Or they only have... Jack Daniels or Crown. Or Crown. They don't even have the stuff they're talking they about. Only, yeah, they don't even have the stuff they're talking about. They can talk about how it tastes and everything, but then you realize they've never had Pappy's. Yeah. And, and you're like, oh, you know, the notes, the butterscotch. Yeah. <laughs> and that's true, too. The poser will also, you'll recognize the poser because they'll start listing flavors that you've never had yeah. in that specific whiskey before. Yeah. They're like, oh, I've had uh, mandarin oranges. Anyway. With There's... pickles. <laughs> oh, wait, that's the thing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next one. There are some people in this room who may at times fall under this category. The bougie. <laughs> bougie. Next time on Whiskey Pop. <laughs> yeah, there's the, the, the bougie whiskey drinker. And, you know, I'm going to own this one 100%. Clearly, the bougie drinker has their palate developed better than everybody else because every other whiskey is trash. That's not true. <laughs> what it is, is you tried so many different things, you do kind of know what you like personally and slowly but surely you're augmenting your palate to richer finer more expensive things because you're bougie you're not nah, you're bougie <laughs> it's, not. it's because they actually are slightly better and and they and you start tasting those differences but then when you give a bougie drinker like a 20 dollar whiskey they almost always go to eh, eh, eh. Eh. yeah but you know i would never tell a guy that's drinking a 20 dollar bottle of whiskey that, eh. that yeah, I wouldn't do <laughs> yeah. that. That'd make you a snob. That'd make me a snob. I'm yeah. just like, they're like, do you want some? I might be like, oh, well, I, you know, I brought my own bottle. I think there's a little bit of boost <laughs> <laughs> my own bottle. <laughs> I think there's a little bit of bougie in all of us. And if you show up at your friend's house with your own bottle of whiskey, you're bougie. All of us do this. Yeah, yeah. All, all of us in this we're, room do we're this. We're freaking bougie, dude. What happens when you show up with your own glass? That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you're still pointing fingers, man. So, yeah, it's that thing that I think there's a little bit of bougie yeah. in all of us. I know that as we've even done a whiskey channel, we become a little more bougie well, that sure every gone. day. Yeah, we can't help it. It's, uh, but it is that thing. I mean, it, it, this is to be fair. I feel like being bougie is kind of the more fun space to be with whiskey anyway. Yeah, it's true. I mean, the bougie is the friendlier one. And the thing is, what I found is that uh, we're always having the conversations about it, and therefore we're usually sharing what we're yeah. bringing in around. No, that's the plus side to a bougie. Is a yeah. bougie is the friendliest to share. Yeah, sure. You want to try some of this? This is really good stuff. This is this is the good stuff. This you, is the good you stuff. You gotta try it. Let me prove to you. <laughs> Which is kind of a cool thing. Yeah, sure. The thing is, you always need a bougie person around you. You just don't want to become bougie. But you always <laughs> need one around you because they buy all the stuff that you don't buy. So right, that that's, the, yeah, that's the problem, right? That's it's right. Like, okay, so this next one, this is one of those ones almost as annoying as the hoarder. It's the preacher. Okay, yeah. So are they trying to tell me what to do or... or what kind of both. One? The preacher usually is the one trying to tell you when it's appropriate time to drink. Is it after 5 o'clock? Oh, it 5.30? Like, you had some in the morning? Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. The preacher is always wanting to make sure you're not turning into the alcoholic. Not that alcoholism is not a serious topic. Oh, it's a, it's a that's an but issue. The preacher is, tends to be fearful of, of alcoholism like it's just creeping around the corner like that guy in that meme. Are you drinking whiskey? <laughs> it's gonna kill your liver. I mean, it's like you're drinking whiskey. Your liver's dead. And the preacher usually is doing this while they're going. Uh huh. So they're usually <laughs> also so they're judging you while they're drinking. The last one of the day is the one that's obvious. We're talking about <clears throat> the newbies to the whiskey. So the noob world. is the next little final one. The newbie yeah. is who we're talking to today, but also maybe some of you guys who may be falling into that category. Yeah, and I would say, like, even though we talk about us being bougie, we're still not out of complete the new world because didn't <clears throat> we just start getting into Japanese whiskey this that's year? That's right, and, and that's the thing yeah. about being noob. I think yeah. you're always a noob. Yeah, because if you if you're willing to try new stuff, you're always a noob. You will new be stuff. The, yeah, you'll be that noob and. Having that mentality of like, well, what is this all about? Mm -hmm. And giving it a go. And always be willing to go back to something you might not have liked before. Which we have done. And then you realize, oh, it was not that bad. Because I, I like Basil Hayden's. 
and you didn't like it when it first. Yeah, first I didn't try, like right? that first one. Yeah. There's always something that's happening, I think, to our palates as when you do whiskey, and you're always new to something. Yeah. So I mean, the noob is kind of one of those things that you're a noob and then you're not a noob, but then you really are a noob. So I think we all kind of exist. And here's the deal with all these. We all have tendencies to be some part a of a piece them. of this. Yeah. There is always a whiskey I've never had. And that is the great thing yeah. about whiskey. There's always a whiskey you've never had. There's yeah. always an opportunity to learn something new. And there's always an opportunity to get excited about a certain whiskey and be a cheerleader or be a hoarder. Yeah. <laughs> or even to you know be just a snob. I mean, it's easy to fall into the snob category. Yeah, you can. I That's see somebody true. put ice in a glass or pour water in a glass. I'm like, oh, don't do that. But you know. Yeah, I mean, it's not a right thing to, to judge people. It's how you approach it that keeps you from being a snob. You're That's like, true. Oh, have you actually tried that with just the whiskey by itself? <laughs> yeah, if you're not, not yeah. putting any water in you that, you got that little caring, <laughs> quivery voice. <laughs> you know, uh, something I like to do is just try it straight by itself. It's called neat. It's called neat. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, you should really try that sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah, it's so easy to pick those up. So, what yeah, about you guys? Sure. What kind of whiskey drinker are you? I mean, are you a snob? Yeah. Or, or a, the next one. Or a hoarder. <laughs> no, it's a collector. Or a collector, and a, a hoarder. hoarder. Yep. Are you a cheerleader? Are you Are a, you just bougie as hell? Or, or are you a noob? Yeah, and what amalgamation of all those things could, could you be? Which that's, one do you lean the most, right? Yeah, that's pretty much where we are today. Yeah, so, you know, in the meantime, you guys continue to be cool this week. And uh, please be sure to subscribe like and subscribe. subscribe to our videos. In yep. the meantime, we will see you again next week with another uh, Hold My Whiskey. So let's hold it. Cheers. Cheers.